Now, finally, we're going to go over to Johnny. We wanted to end with this, the, the panel with this presentation because, as you'll see, it's slightly less on the policy level uh, and more about, well, you'll see for yourself. Um, and if we could just, I, I can't see them from here, but if we could just bring up his photos on the screen. Um, yeah, we've I believe he gave the USB stick. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Good afternoon. And um, I really want to say it's an honor to be represented on this stage um, with such uh, an illustrious panel here, especially Deputy Minister Schwedte. It's really an honor f to be here with you. Um, I know that you're using my images at your booth at the, for the Department of Human Settlements. So really, it's an honor. Um, I wanted to talk to you as a practitioner of visual culture. The topic I was asked to speak on was how um, can we reduce or address inequalities through culture and innovation? And so I've got a story here, if you allow me for a few slides to talk about how I'm doing that as a uh, visual culture practitioner. This is my city. Um, I live in Cape Town, South Africa. It's a quite a beautiful city. But this is a side of the city, and actually this is an angle of the city that I'm sure the deputy minister and myself are very familiar with, does not represent the entirety of South Africa or Cape Town's population. This is a much better view, and through data we can actually make things very clear. I think um, because of the, the colors for each of the dots, which represent um, different racial groups in South Africa, you can see how divided the city still is. And I'm actually, I wasn't born in South Africa. I was actually born in America. And when I moved to South Africa eight years ago, the divisions struck me, the, especially the divisions near the airport, um, which is towards the right-hand side of the screen, as you pass on the N2, past the Gateway Project that the Deputy Minister was talking about, you do see the divisions between the former colored and black areas and the white areas. And by and large, people still live in these areas. The question is, how do we get people to care about these issues? Uh, we've heard a lot of amazing solutions from the panel here, which I am so excited to see implemented. But three years ago when I started my project, I felt like there was a habituation to inequality in Cape Town that was really scary because I felt also that it was starting to creep into my life. I would leave my house and go into the center of town to work and I didn't have to pass by the townships. I didn't have to be confronted with the inequality. It was very easy to just go about my life. And so this story also involves innovation. It involves a drone because my photograph started with uh, a drone. And when I got the drone, I picked this township area. This is called Masapumalele. It's, a, it's an area about 20 kilometers south of Cape Town CBD where, as you can see, there's an extremely dense population of black Africans who live in an otherwise fairly rural area that's quite rich um, of mostly white people. And I took the drone. I went to uh, a parking lot near Masapumalele, and I got here. Now, this is a, a Google Maps image of the parking lot that I parked in, but you can see there's walls surrounding a lot of communities in South Africa. It's quite easy to ignore inequality when you can't see it. And a lot of people in rich communities in South Africa live behind these high walls. Now the beauty of a drone obviously is that it can fly over these high walls, right? So I put the drone on the ground, it went up into the air, and this is the image that I took. Um, this was in April 2016, and uh, I'm a photographer by training. I put this image onto my Facebook page and went to bed. So I went to sleep. I only had 200 people that liked my Facebook page at the time. When I woke up in the morning, this photo had gone viral. And the comments that were coming were coming fast and furious about what this photo represented. It was almost like I had ripped some sort of Band-Aid off or allowed people to see inequality in a new way that the incredible outpouring of energy and passion that was possible on Facebook and social media through this new technology made possible with a drone was really, really palpable. And to be honest, this has continued over the last three years. It's been incredible to me as someone who has a background. I mean, the reason I'm at uh, in Cape Town is to study, I studied anthropology at the University of Cape Town, but not funds and not a support structure to make something like this happen, to get people paying attention to inequality. It was totally ground up. It was totally uh, people driven. And I think what I wanted to talk to you about today 
is how to enable that in your communities and how I enabled it. Um, I don't know if you've heard of this habituate, uh, sorry, this phenomenon called the habituation mechanism. Maybe there's some communicators in the audience who have heard of this. It basically is the fact that in our brains, we don't pay attention to things that we see every day. So when you drive to work in your cities, maybe in Accra or maybe in Pretoria or maybe in Baku, you don't notice the stoplights that you go past every day. You don't notice walking in and getting the coffee from your barista or opening the door to your office. But you probably do notice it in Dhabi because we're traveling. We've never seen, I've never seen Abu Dhabi before. Maybe you guys have, actually. So the idea that we can create visual culture that breaks that habituation mechanism and gets people to pay attention to our message is what I'm trying to do and is what I think as communicators who are interested in social policy and doing things for social good, that's what we're trying to do. Um, I'll show you a couple more photos. This is from uh, Johannesburg and Durban. Now the project started in South Africa, but I've since gone on to take uh, photos in six different countries. Um, I think that seeing these incredible images or these incredible views of inequality isn't enough though. So the habituation mechanism works to get people to stop and pay attention to what you're talking about, but it doesn't make them care. <laughs> Especially on social media, we're bombarded with so many images every day. I can see a lot of you in the crowd right now on your phones, tweeting, on Facebook, telling people where you're at, telling people that you're doing something that means something, but do people care? So the second part of what I try to do is get people to acknowledge the problem. And that's by telling stories. That's by adding nuance and by adding context. And in this project in particular, um, I wrote and did research and engaged with communities wherever I took photos to produce stories of inequality wherever I went. And I think that was a large part of why this project has spread. Um, as a photographer, obviously, you want an image that strikes people, but you also want to get people to pay attention to how it is relevant to their lives. And I think that that's really important depending on the target audience. The target audience for me are people in positions of power. It's policymakers, it's middle class people, it's my mom and my dad in America who probably represent the middle class very well. This photo in particular, um, I don't want to describe it in too much detail, but it's got an incredible backstory. This golf course was actually named after an Indian South African golfer. And in 1967, he won a big golfing event. He actually beat Gary Player. Um, the golfer's name is Papua Sugalem. Gary Player was the most famous white golfer at the time in South Africa. And Papua Sugalem beat him at this golf event. When he went to go get his trophy, everyone came and they were ready to see him get his trophy, but it started to rain. So everyone ran into the clubhouse, but it was whites only. So Papua Sugalem, being Indian, couldn't go in the clubhouse. And there's a very famous photo of him receiving his trophy outside in the rain. And it became this rallying cry to, uh, for other countries in the world to put sanctions on South African sporting events specifically. Um, the South African government punished Papua Sugalem for that, and he died actually penniless, unfortunately. He was never allowed to leave the country to play golf again. So uh, in 1994, the ANC government named this golf course after him. And I think the sad irony now is that there's an informal settlement that's taken hold um, on the golf course land right next to it. I've been fortunate enough, like I said, to do this in multiple other countries, including uh, the USA. So I'm American by birth, the uh, USA. Um, I've also taken photos of inequality there. This is Baltimore. In the upper left is Mexico City, Mumbai, Nairobi, and uh, Baltimore. Um, this is not just a developing world problem. It's not just an African problem. I see this as uh, a global problem, a problem with um, the habituation mechanism, like I said, but also a problem with self-interest. The SDGs work to um, address this, but it's going to take local government, it's going to take national government, it's going to take provincial government, it's going to take grassroots. Um, I kind of want to end on this. If you want to follow the project more, my Twitter and Instagram there um, will show you. But I just want to end with this image because the project has since become so big that it's now out of my hands in a way. And we've talked about seeing the problem, and we've talked about acknowledging the problem, but now's the time to act on the problem. And I think for anything, inequality, climate change, uh, gender inequality, we heard that in the 
earlier session, um, which is extremely important, digital inequalities, climate inequalities. It's now up to us as practitioners, policymakers, activists, to actually put that into practice, to act, to implement. Um, my job as a visual communicator is to bring that to the awareness, but it takes a spectrum of people, it takes a spectrum of actors to actually solve the problem. So thanks once again for inviting me to be on the stage. It's really, it's really an honor. Thank you. Thanks, Johnny. That's that's fascinating. I think one one thing that you said will probably stick with many of us is that it's easy to ignore inequalities when you can't see them, and then the need for a visual culture to break that kind of habituation mechanism, which I'd never heard of, but makes makes complete sense. So thank you for that. Um, I'm sorry we've robbed many of you of uh, questions. I do still want, though, to take one very quick round, and then we'll move on to our final panel. Um, for those of you needing to rush off somewhere, we'll probably end about five to ten, ten minutes late. I promise we'll try to make it no longer than that. But I do want to see if there are any questions for our panelists. We've got such a diverse range of backgrounds and experiences. Um, so I'll probably take two or three questions at the same time, and then we'll put them to the panelists. Over there, and a the mic is coming to you. Good afternoon. I would like to thank Johnny Muller for giving an expression of South Africa. My name is Giovanni. I'm from South Africa. I live in one of the most uh, socially segregated cities, which is Port Elizabeth. And um, I would just like to plead with the minister through culture, because none of our cities has a unique culture, because our colonial pasts are entrenched so deeply in our cities' layouts. And it's through what Johnny says about how we live in our cities, is that the darker your skin is, the more you're exposed you are to the less privileges you are. And if you're white, you are not exposed to those less privileges. And thank you very much, Johnny, for your presentation. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for your comment. Any questions? Yes, one just here. Mike is on its way to you. Um, and I just want to identify if there are any others. No? Uh, thank you okay. very much. Well, uh, you have the final word then. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Golani Sotashe. I'm from South African Local Government Association. Um, I think to Johnny, the pictures that he presented to us here, I just want to find out what would be your view on the decision that has been taken, I think it's 2015, for the new urban agenda using the spaces that we have to have a kind of a different outlook of our cities, especially in South Africa, where you de depicted a situation of the segregation of groups. Because South Africa, of course, would seek to integrate communities, uh, whether you are poor or rich, but we live in harmony. So what would be your strong message to make sure that we reverse what we have seen in the last uh, 300 plus years in the uh, South African space? Thank you very much. Thank you. Just checking, we don't have any other. No, we don't. Great. Um, so, any burning. Yeah, sure. I'm a bit uh, curious. Uh, so far, you have uh, uh, depicted all those pictures at the, the location. Is there any action been taken? Any particularly uh, particular countries? What have they done about it? Yeah, you know, it's it's a little uncomfortable to be up here with a panel full of ministers and mayors and <laughs> have to answer on what's been done on behalf of solving inequality. But to your point, uh, the South African government has made great strides, and I visited your booth. I saw the photographs from Cornubia and the N2 Gateway Project and Fleurhof in Johannesburg, and there's a lot of success stories in South Africa that I'm familiar with. Um, and I hope that the people from South Africa here don't feel like I'm somehow focusing on the bad at the expense of the good. I don't feel like it's a zero-sum game. And I think that that's important because, and th I think the government, in, specifically in South Africa, but also the other five countries that I've been in, have been very supportive of this project because I think that we get that, right? I think that we get that by spurring people on from where we've been, we can create an imaginary for where we're going to go. And I don't think you can create that imaginary without having some grounding in the reality. And the reality is, like the gentleman said behind me, that a lot of people of color, and specifically Cape Town, but all the cities in South Africa still live where they were placed during apartheid. So spatial inequality is a real thing, and it's going to take 
an incredible amount of resources. And I think that's why it's great we're up here with ministers and mayors because I don't honestly believe it's a grassroots solution. I think that that's part of it, but I think the bulk for solving systemic issues is going to come from national government. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Johnny. And I'm going to give the final word, speaking of inequality, but um, to the deputy minister, just because I'd like to move on to our um, final panel. But you wanted to comment on the question about um, any recommendations on how to deliver on the urban agenda, particularly in South Africa. No, I wanted to tell Johnny that the massive phenomenon that you're talking about, I'm deployed there. I know what you're talking about. It's exactly how this, this community is. I want to, to say, I'll give you my card and we're going to work together. The question, the the, the the comment by the or the question by the by the, he he is the mayor. He is uh, he is working in the. He, he shouldn't be ans uh, uh, asking questions. He should come up with the, the 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 answers, the solutions rather. So he must answer. He must not ask from South Africa, because he's from there. He's the he's in the council in the Western Cape. <laughs> That's a very uh, Star Wars Yoda reflection. Find the answer within yourself. Do not ask the question. <laughs> um, thank you so much for your patience, but mostly thank you so much to our panel. You all have such a breadth and, and richness of experience. Um, really enjoyed hearing from you, and we'd love for you to stay for the final panel. Um, if you're able to stay, I'd also encourage those of you who were interested in asking questions to find them afterwards, perhaps exchange your cards, because, again, you have some very senior and interesting people here. So, again, thank you so much.